shame. <laughs> Two, one. What noise is that? <laughs> oh, it's gonna blow up. yourself, Megan. I've got the heart and desire. My balls are out. Fire. Ready to take us to the top. Okay, it's going to blow up. Oh. Welcome to the show. Did you know that your mom is up? Really? Probably friendly makes you sandwiches, drives you to school, picks you up, gives you advice when you're hurting. Show! Welcome to the show. We need a new smoke machine because I am now scared. That sound, it's like you ever blow up a tire and you don't know what the tire pressure is, but you want it to be real, real blown up. One time I had a fight friend, Dan Henderson, said he blew up a tractor tire and it popped and it blew his eyebrows off. Oh my God. And he's a real tough guy. And I was like, I would have died. He just lost his eyebrows. Megan Holiday is here, everybody. Hello. From the world famous K Rock. Yeah. Not Megan. Megan. Correct. Yeah. You got it. See, I'm from Australia, and I feel like sometimes I could just be like, no. It's, it's Megan, Megan in yes. Australia. It's usually people from Australia or New Zealand that people do say, say Brianna Megan. instead of Brianna. Yeah, but you know the thing with Brianna, which I call her Brianna, yeah. is that she doesn't even know which way she, it is. She's just so friendly. Yeah, she she'll goes, take anything, huh? Yeah. Oh, no, that's fine. Yeah, I like, to, yeah, I no, like Rihanna. Totally. That is not the truth. <laughs> yes, it is. That is not the truth. You, you just refuse to say what your real name is because you don't want to make anybody feel awkward. <laughs> well, and Brie, you asked... Well, really, I call you Brie, if that's we're being safe. honest. And by the way, Brianna's my best friend ever. And no, you, you asked your, my best friend. You, right? No, Jason. You no, let's yeah, go. let's... Yeah, oh, I'm ready. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> you did it! Terrestrial, you know, did it! I know. Yeah. I just get too excited here. I get too okay, yeah. but it, the full word didn't come out. Totally. That's a f good Don't show, reprimand man. It gets me. Exciting but here. anyway, Brie even asked. We're gonna beat that. Brie asked her mom. Relax, tubes. <laughs> and <laughs> I know. I call them tube because we're. I you mean, know, YouTube and Alice. Is it YouTube that gets the tube? Shout out to the tube. The tube gets pissed. You and I. You know, I'm like we're just. What's that? How's that song? I have no idea what you're. That is no song. You're together in perfect. Ebony harmony. and Ivory? Yeah. <laughs> you and me. Oh, no. wow. I didn't know that was so good. I didn't know until I got into it. There you go. But yeah, two banalis, like <laughs> Ebony and Ivory. <laughs> What's this for? It's two together. Oh, okay. Okay. It looks. Yeah. Quite, it looks a little questionable. Uh, <laughs> I know. <right? laughs> Middle school flashbacks. Yeah. <laughs> Screwdriver? That was the only school I went to. So that's all I remember. That's where his finger <laughs> education ended. I didn't <laughs> finger. <laughs> Did I? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man. Oh, you bring him back. Uh, no, shut up, Jason. <laughs> the tube. We're good. We made it. Yeah. And we'll what, see. 30 seconds in and I and already you ruined it. Yep, I you ruined, ruined it. it. Yeah. So you're welcome, guys. Yeah. How's it going? It's going good. You look good. Thank you. You yeah. look good, too. And I wanted to say. Stop hitting on me. I, well, I mean, it's right. it's hard not to. No. But no, I want to say congratulations, dude, yeah. on your recovery over 60 days now. Yeah. And you're doing you're yeah. doing good. It's very, it's very apparent, you know, that you've had you know, a little change going on. Yeah. Yeah. I was hanging out with one of my uh, straight edge friends the other day, him and his wife, Toby and Moon, beautiful oh, people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I was at the comedy store and he said, man, you look so good. He's like, your skin is radiant. And I was like, dude, are you hitting on me? Because you never know. <laughs> <laughs> it's radiant, dude. This is getting gay as hell right here. Well, there's anything wrong with it. But um, he... <laughs> He's he said that he saw me a few times in recent 
times. I said that too. That said that wrong, but said that he saw he saw, me, he saw me recently and said that he was worried. Yeah, and I didn't. I was like, "Well, you didn't say anything." He's like, "Well, you did, I didn't think it was gonna do anything, but yeah." And I, I didn't notice that, you know. Yeah. But I did feel sick a lot from doing all that kratom, and I, I, you know, there were several times there where I was like, oh, "Man, I feel so sick right now," and then I go do a show, you know, or. I go like I skate, and I'm like, man, I feel like I could throw up right now. I just <laughs> never going. really, yeah, I never yeah. really. I was being, like, well, being sick like that is the worst thing on the planet. Because yeah. uh, from what I understand about kratom, is it's very similar to getting off of heroin and opiates and stuff. Yeah, which yeah, which is hor. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. It's awful. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> i can't believe kratom is a thing you can just go buy at a head shop i think that's, that's the craziest nuts. thing about it because when i was a kid if you did heroin you, you really hated yourself you had to get really down you know like i didn't do heroin until i was like really down there was several times where it was there and i was like come on man i got a life to live and then there was a time where i was like i don't really care what happened so yeah i'll do it but the if it was if that if i had an if there was smoke shops when I was a kid where that was there, I wouldn't have counted that as a, as a, uh, I'm really down and yeah. be like, oh man, you get a little high off this. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Exactly. Yeah, I wouldn't have known. So there's definitely not mm. enough. Uh, well, I mean, I haven't really looked into it, but there's, I, no, I just there's kept no... hearing about Kratom, Kratom, and I'm just like, I don't understand what that, what most that people is. don't know about it. Yeah. And the people that do know about it, I would say <clears throat> roughly, in my opinion, 90% of them, maybe 99, have no idea how dangerous it is. Mm -hmm. I, myself, when I used to do terrestrial, sorry, satellite radio, there was a guy on the show that used to warn Tully and I about it, and we would joke with him as in, calm down, you loser. Uh -huh. It's like, we were like, let's get some. And we, we, none of us were actually doing it. We just kept talking about how we wanted to do it because it would annoy him. Yeah. And because the name is so dumb. Yeah. I think it was funny just to it say is. it. It is. Yeah. It really is. It's but got a horrible uh, uh, branding angle. It sounds like something from Superman or something like, you know? Yeah. Like crazy. Well, that sounds cool. Oh, right. You know what? It it's a, it's a, I'm a little bit like Superman <laughs> are you when it are? comes to Kratom because that wrecks me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got no yeah, superpowers true, when right? it's near it's me. Yeah. kryptonite? Yeah, it is yeah, my kryptonite. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> it is because I, I feel like I'm half the man I uh, used to be. Uh, half the man. Yeah. Used to be. Okay, you guys did it way better. <laughs> I was in a hurry. Um, but yeah, I think the the sketchiest thing about it is the companies that do it. No, yeah, you know what? I don't really care if it's offensive to you. Nobody says that there's any side effects. Nobody says that it's it could be potentially dangerous. You know, I've seen certain people on TikTok, real big famous people that influence millions of people every day, saying that it, it's way better than alcohol and it, and it makes you a better conversationalist. <laughs> I am I am going to say that that person that said that doesn't know and hasn't done it. Because I don't believe that that person is that malicious. I think that they are the same as I was when I got some and was sponsored by a company. And I was like, yeah, man, it's a great after workout. You know what? It's kind of good before a workout. And then that was the end of me. <laughs> it's kind of good anytime. But they don't, you can't, there's no comment. They won't let you comment, you know, because I, I feel like, um, you know, somebody like me saying, hey, man, like I did it. I did a lot of it and it really wrecked me, like really wrecked me, almost took my whole life away from me. You know, like I was willing to just go down the road and, and kiss everything that I cherish goodbye. That's that's me obviously i have an addictive personality and some people don't um maybe you could do it and you could be like that's cool every now and then i i do a little kratom yeah just like some people like to have a little wine at dinner and then they go or about a little their which i'll never understand yeah because i remember tell you saying just do a couple lines and get on with their night tell reckons mick jagger could do that yeah, Remember you're your probably theory? right. Yeah, he I would. Think, he would just do like a little, like a couple bumps before shows and stuff like that. I've heard of people who I wasn't there to verify what they're saying, but it sounded truthy to me that he was doing uh, like very late in his career, like already in his 60s, doing a recording session mm -hmm. and just brought a little bit in like yeah. every top of every hour or so he'd do another bump or so. Yeah. Certain people really are like they're not a little bit better than us. They they may as well be a different species, right? You know, like Michael Jordan doesn't jump a little bit higher than you, you know. And Ozzy Osbourne isn't just a little bit more indestructible than you. 
He's a lot more indestructible. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. part of the allure. He's yeah. almost superhuman. Maybe one yeah. of Mick Jagger's superpowers was he's able to dance with the devil and never slip into the quicksand. Right. Yeah. It seems that way. Yeah, it totally does. And cool. there are people out there that can do that. And it's crazy. Did Ozzy get away with it? Because when you think about it, he's pretty rocky. <laughs> No, I understand. You know, that. like what is he saying? It's There's so... one. <laughs> yeah. Why is he wobbling so much? There's two. You know, and then when yeah. he comes out, like, hey, 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 buddy, and I'm like, why can't your hands fully clap? You know. Oh, right. My God. It's like, you know, because to me, weed. I remember certain people that were on the show would be like, man, I don't know how you do it, where you smoke that weed and go do stuff. And I was like, I skate high. And and I remember one, one guy going. Yeah, it's just you can do it. I can't, if I do it, I can't talk. I become antisocial. Like I just can't do it. And I was like, "Oh, yes, poor you." You know, I, I get away with it. But then, many years later, I asked myself the question: Would I be better if I could get out of it? Because I always thought I could get out of it. But me getting out of it, I'm scared I'm going to hurt somebody or do something that I'm really going to regret because of my temper. So I was like, I'm never going to quit because I can't. You know, if I had the money to go on an island for a month by myself, then I feel like, yeah, I could get away. I could try it. Like the first time I ever tried to quit when somebody tried to get me sober, I was like, I need a week off work. And I took a week off work and didn't smoke for a week. And then I was able to to go about my life. But that was when I was, I just tried to, uh, I didn't have a spot. I didn't have, I didn't do the work. Mm -hmm. I just was like, I quit. And then that that lasted only so much time before. I was like, what am I doing? I'm so depressed without it. You know, because I, I got a lot of issues and I didn't tend to them. I just was like, I don't do it anymore. And it didn't work. Yeah. But well, will it... I be better? Can I be a better person? The biggest one is because of skateboarding. Would I be a better skateboarder if I was completely sober? There's no denying as hard as I want to that I would be. And then you go... Would you be better at your show? Would you be better at comedy? And here's the ones that really sting. Would you be a better father? Would you be a better husband? And those are the ones that really hurt. Because I realized that the answer is so painfully yes. And I've been doing it my whole life. So that means everything that I've done around those people could have been better. And I can't get that back, you know? Yeah, it, yeah, and and that goes for all of us who are addicts. But the good news is that you know you finally kind of you actually realized, okay, this is for real. I'm an addict, and I have to stop doing this, and I'm willing to actually do the work around it, because um, that doesn't happen for all people. Some people die from this disease, you know, and you have now the rest of your life to where you're going to be able to be a good father and be a good partner to someone be a better friend you know and actually help people through the experiences that you've had and help other people get sober you just celebrated a big milestone yeah. right yeah i just celebrated eight years yeah champion thing yeah your sobriety is like a third grader <laughs> i know right that's I how post, old i feel <laughs> i posted my 60 day thing on on uh, instagram and i screen capped a photo from my son who said, great job, Dad. Love you. Keep going. You're doing great. That must feel so good. That's the thing that means the most mm -hmm. by far. Yep. I'm getting emotional. Yeah. Well, and like, and as you stay sober and you do the work and, you know, you get those opportunities <clears throat> to just suit up and show up, as they say, and, you know, make amends. And it's like you have from right now on yeah. into the rest of their entire lives to be there and to yeah. be a great dad. And I know for me, like, you know, if, if that were me as a kid, like I would just be happy for that. Cause right. you, you can't take back the things that have been done. Right. He's know? uh he's coming to winter X games with me. Oh my God. That's so awesome. Yeah. yeah. And I've seen his, his boxing videos and stuff. Yeah. At yeah. least snowboarding. He's like, I'm practicing for X games and I'm like, you're not in it. You know that, right? <laughs> he's like, I'm just getting ready for the, for Aspen. But I, I was trying to get him a room cause he wants to come with a friend and I couldn't get him X games not enough time. So he, they're going to be in my room. Oh, wow. Two 14 year olds. <laughs> oh, God. And I try to tell him, I'm like, dude, this is so important to me, this job. And they're going to, you know, I mean, it's crazy hours. I got to get up early. I got to work all night. 
and I got to do research because this is in the snow. I don't know X Games uh, winter like I do X Games summer. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I'll be good. Like, uh, And I'm like, I know you try to be good, but you're 14. <laughs> Like, I can't even blame you. I know that I'm going to be going to bed and they're going to be like, hee hee hee, <laughs> TikTok videos. They'll be like, hey, 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 you got to turn that off. And they'll be like, yeah, okay. And then they won't. And then, you know I mean? They'll have like a food fight or something. I'll be like, dude. Bro, 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 yeah. Yeah. bro, bro. Dude, can we bro, get food? Bro. I'm like, dude, so much money for, yeah, but sure. <laughs> this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is this online, online service that it's like therapy. Well, it's not like. It's straight up therapy, but instead of going to like the weird office where they make you go in a wait, what? Why do I have to go to a waiting room when we already made an an appointment and and I'm there on time because I'm paying you a crap load of money and now I'm in this other room? What going on TikTok? You know TikTok's bad for you, right, therapist? Just go to Better Help and then you can get online therapy and it's cheap. And it's real good because I one, one time I had a turbo Porsche twin turbo and I was rich and I went to saw this real cool therapist that used to be do therapy for like rock stars and stuff. He's a good guy. He was pretty good. But better help, just as good. And there's no waiting room. And the therapist, the therapist that I talked to, just as good. Guess what? If they're not, cut. And then I go find another one until I find the right one because it's that convenient by using better help. And if you go right now to betterhelp.com slash Alice, you get 10% off your first month. So Bob's your uncle. That's H-E-L-P, betterhelp.com slash Alice. Yeah, but sure. So Bree, just be ready for two 14-year-old boys to show up at your um, room at 1 a.m. Yeah. You know, I don't I don't mind Tiger. I, uh, I love that guy. <laughs> I had to hang out with him at Summer X. Aww. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that I have not heard yeah, he in put, front of his name. That he is made awesome. a playlist for me. He oh, what? Yeah. What was on the playlist? Uh, what's that Eyes Without a Face song? Yeah, Eyes Without Billy, a Face. Billy Idol. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he pretty much nailed it, Brianna. Brianna. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Brianna. Oh, you, you two together <laughs> frightened me. Um, yeah. Yeah, and some, I don't know, some gangster rap kid yeah, stuff that i don't really oh, know yeah. but i didn't mind it what's up with the i'm i feel like such an old lady right yeah, now but no, you, as soon as you what, said that yeah what is up with the the hip-hop today what yeah. the, the good question the mumble yeah. rap what is that oh it's going away is it yeah okay yeah how do you know that because i've there's some new people coming and uh, that are actually talented and or people what? in people that are into hip-hop are less into it and then i saw uh Come on, Jason. There's no way. There's no way. I'm not going to do it. There's a guy, a rapper, who he's an actor as well, Michael. Not common. <clears throat> he's like a thinking rapper. You know, he has like actual meanings to like the stories he's telling. Most well, rhyming. Deaf? Yes. Yeah. There was no way I was going to get that. <laughs> uh, he did a podcast with somebody and they said, how do you feel about uh, Drake? Mm -hmm. And he was like, it's great music to go shopping to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, and I could see his face. You know, it's like when someone tells, like, you know, Jason, how do you feel about rollerblading or whatever? And yeah. an older Jason is like, you know, it's, it's, it's good exercise, you know? And you get out there and you roll around, you know, like I'm trying to stay positive because it's cool. You know, he could he can do it if you want to. But he had the same tone mm -hmm. with Drake and, I, and no offense to Drake. Uh, but I did hear he spent seventy thousand on Strickland. Bam! You lost seven hundred thousand. I thought was it? Yeah. Or oh, even better, <laughs> um, dude. He's dealing with amounts of money that are hard to fathom. I went to this like weird art installation thing that Drake's company put together, and they were throwing around like he his people put a hundred million dollars into this thing. Oh my what? god. I saw Joel oh Alstein. Oh, my gosh. Mumble, <laughs> mum, mumble, mumbling's been good to him. Listen to this. Listen to this. I'm a tool. Sorry. Joel Alstein. I saw a video of him crying about how he uh, renovated his church and it was going to cost him $100 million. <clears throat> and he was praying and struggling. And uh, his good friends at Bank of America gave him the money. And, and he starts crying in the church about how great it is that his good friends at Bank of America, I mean, because you blessed, they, you know, he asked for blessings and 
Bank of America gave him the money, and yeah. now we have this amazing church. You know, you <laughs> suck so hard, bro. You're like sketches on steroids. Oh my god, yeah, that guy sucks donkeys. <laughs> yeah, that's all right, right? God, for the God, God works in mysterious ways, like <laughs> yeah. gigantic multinational banks. So gnarly. <laughs> that's so God. It's so right, God. Like just Jesus is Classic like classic Jesus. Let me call Bank of America yeah. and get that done, Olsen. You. Oh my God! Can I sound even older? Yeah, I was listening to the Fugees on the way here. Yeah, that's I, pretty uncool. I never listened to their big. Cool. I never I mean, listened to their big album. I just wanted to hear. I was like, I, I never actually. Fugees. I was like, I liked them individually. Why yeah. did I never listen to the score? I was too busy listening, you know, rocking and rolling. And I'm driving, and I hear uh, a siren, and I'm like, Oh shit! Is there like, do I need to pull over? And I'm like, No, idiot! Duh, it's hip hop. It's, it's the Fugees. <laughs> yeah. And then I get like. I'm getting on the 101, and I hear it again. I'm like, nah, -uh, it's the Fujis. There's no emergency. Yeah. Third time, I'm right around the corner from you. I'm like, fuck you, Fujis. Ambulance goes right in front of me. Oh wow! <laughs> you, you got Fuji, dude. Yeah. I saw the guy. Who's the guy? The Billy Eilish's brother who makes all the music and takes no credit for it. Phineas. Mm -hmm. He was on a show saying that uh, in Australia, when you press to walk, and the you know the thing says you can cross the street. In Australia, this thing that goes did, 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 and he was at the street and he was hearing the sound. He was like, "Man, that'd be really cool in the song," and that's like one of the beats in the song. So that's your music. Uh, who is it, Gen Z? Who, who, whoever you are now, we're at Gen Alpha now. Gen they Alpha? rolled the odometer back to A. Yeah. Oh my god, that's it's Gen Alpha. Yeah. That's, yeah I mean, yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. Where are you gonna go from Z? Your beats come from uh, <clears throat> crosswalks. <laughs> exciting so, so i feel the passion and the soul in that you know <laughs> so sorry but drake is considered mumble rap no. oh yeah i don't think so no, no? Oh, no. okay no. well because well, totally said considered, something okay he's considered cr he's just like crap pop rap yeah, yeah crap pop. crap rap target yeah walmart yeah. but also hip-hop has had a large history of just also fun songs a lot of the first tracks are very like you know that's the joint funky floor plus one a lot of early Pre the message by Grandmaster Flash. It's all just fun, lighthearted hip hop. Can you try not to cuss, McCone? Oh, sorry. <laughs> trying to do a show, you're in charge of it, and you give us all the advice, and then you just so ruined us. How old is McComb? 24. And are you a Drake fan? I think he's all right, but I'm just, I'm a big hip hop head in general. Okay. But I do think. I so mean, this conversation is frustrating. To, are we, did we say I don't ridiculous? know, in some ways. You guys, a little bit like old heads, but I mean, if we're yeah. talking about most deaf in general, on the opening track of Black on Both Sides, he says, uh, people ask him what's going on with hip hop, and I tell him, whatever's happening with us, that's what's happening with hip hop. If we're, if we're smoked out, hip hop's going to be smoked out. If we're dialed in, hip, hip hop's going to be dialed in. It's always a reflection of what the people are doing. And hip hop more than ever is a representation of everyone because it's, you know, past couple years has been one of the largest genres worldwide. So it's just more of a representation of us. Than well, it's ever been before. more than a couple of years. I mean, hip hop's been the dominant form of music since the 90s. I just Even mean like billboard, billboard wise, this is like a new phenomenon as of like 2017 or 18. It dominated the top 40 more than any other genre. Right. But my, my point is at a certain point, uh, pop artists like, Timberlake was uh, Justin Timberlake wasn't the first, but he was among the first big ones where it was like he was making pop songs where he was singing over a rap beat. Until mm -hmm. then, like the pop stars had songs, yeah. And instead, it was like these are rap songs. I'm just singing instead yeah. of. And, and at that point, really everything in the mainstream is hip hop. Most stuff is. And McCone, I'm sure I don't need to tell you this as a hip hop head. He's sort of the wrong guy to ask about what do you think of Drake because from the time his career launched, he was an alternative to the mainstream hip hop of yeah. his day. Mm -hmm. He yeah. even famously hated on Lil Wayne. Over, uh, he famously said he puts uh, MF Doom over Lil Wayne in the middle of Wayne's like the height of his career. Right. And I do, you know, they're very different artists to compare. Wayne was much more pop in that sphere, but he's still one of the greatest of all time. And so is so is Doom. You know. I just think people need to stop copying. <laughs> Make your own thing. I think everybody just sounds like everybody. Yeah, it just all, all sounds the same. You're all lined up. You just want to be you're like, that's cool. Let me do a variation of that. But all music sounds the same right now. Nope. Ren. Anything new that's coming out? Like, Have well, I mean, main, mainstream. Huh? Have you heard Ren? Ren? Yeah. The female artist? No, he's a guy. Oh. He's an English guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you did send sick. that to me. I'm, I'm his biggest You're fan. You're obsessed. Yeah. A uh, little bit. <laughs> yeah. A lot of it. I'm obsessed with <laughs> okay. this. Okay. <laughs> I'm obsessed with this artist named Sam Fender that's, like, out of the UK. A new guy? 
He's newish, yeah, over the last handful of years. And it's just really good songwriting and yeah. incredible voice. Like, yeah. that's really and unique. I this think. guy's really a really good rhyme rap guy who sings, plays guitar, really good singer, plays bass, plays keyboard, plays like he does songs where he's singing with a girl and he's playing guitar at the same time. And you're like, this is a really good song. And then he just got straight up rap songs where there's no way you would think that he could do both. Yeah. Because he's so good at it. But then again, I'm a 50 year old black guy from Australia. <laughs> hey, we're Maybe old. Maybe is like, we're this old is heads. the worst rhyme I've ever heard. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. But to me, I like new people. Huh. I haven't liked a new person for 20 years. Like I just, you know, I mean, a new guy, a new band, new group. I'm like, meh, yeah, okay. You know, because it's always like, I'm into metal stuff or like rock and roll. And it's like, have you heard Wolf Mother? And I'm like, oh my God, shut up. Like, yes, I, I have it, it, like 40 years ago. It's called <laughs> yeah, Led Zeppelin, yeah. you douche. <laughs> what about Greta Van Fleet then? Yeah. <laughs> who's you know the, about Greta Van Fleet? Who's, sure, I also who's, yeah. enjoy I didn't really love Led Zeppelin the first time. Okay. So doesn't who's, have a whole yeah, lot for Who's me. the old guy yeah, yeah, that yeah. said in the commando, I haven't got time to bleed? Uh, Danny Glover? Nah, white guy was a wrestler. Jesse Ventura. Yeah, he was like, I've heard some really good music recently. I'm like, you're about to die. Shut up. Oh you don't know God. anything, you wobbly bastard. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Well, Megan, tell me something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> about K-Rock. Yes. What is, <laughs> what's like the core demo that's listening to K-Rock these days? So it's male. Sure. 18 to... Okay. 35 like yeah 18 to probably 35 okay so no i'm sure people older but than that. 25 to 35 core demo i would say okay mm -hmm. so now this is important because you would you're speaking from ex experience k-rock is there fundamentally to they love they're passionate about the music but they're there to make money mm -hmm. you guys are still playing all the stuff from the 90s mm -hmm. playing some stuff from the 2000s mm -hmm. how many songs that have come out in the last, so it's 2024 now, in the last 15 years that got regular rotation and to, you know, say five years ago, six years, whatever, still getting played as much as the shit from the 90s. To a bunch of 20-year-olds, I ask you, not for a bunch of old heads, yeah. to the children. How yeah, many, awesome. Megan? I mean, God, out of all of those songs, yeah. probably, I mean, I would say probably less than 10 percent hmm it yeah. sounds to me like even the children know their music sucks yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah yeah because it doesn't test well right you know yeah that, no you're not you're that's, not you, radio yeah. anybody who thinks that somebody's back to go man you know what to be real jazzy yeah. <laughs> yeah maybe this time i'll play that limp biscuit song <laughs> yeah. into this rage song it's like no bra this stuff is it's it's about as organic as you know it's like a, no grandma's making the toll house cookies yep and you guys are the Toll House Cookies of Music. It's You're giving the people what they want. Methodical, yeah. yeah. And they do music tests. Like there, there's like weekly callouts yeah. where they get a little bit of information about new songs or just any songs that we're playing. And then they do uh, these music tests. And when things don't test well, they're gone. And I they, think it's because it's corporate. Know. I think corporate stops new people from existing. Because well, you got to look at this, like in X Games, winter and summer all the new video parts of snowboarders and skateboarders, nobody's watching Animal Chin again. You know, like the kids are watching all the new people because they're doing crazy stuff that's way better than anyone ever did in the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s. Like, the level is out of control. But in music, you can't pass Led Zeppelin. You can't surpass them and make them look like old people. You suck. Well, here's the other thing. You've you're so pathetic. You need to go to the music gym and seriously get on some musical steroids and further the game. How embarrassing is it that you haven't furthered the game? Nobody's impressing me. You're supposed to blow my mind. You haven't blown my mind one time. You lazy bastards. You know why? Because you're getting bottle service instead of being in a dark room writing stuff. <laughs> No friends, no girlfriends. Make you music and only think Be about depressed. the music. Yeah. But you're not. You're like, ooh, what about this chain? Does it match my shoes? Douche, losers. You're pathetic, and God is gonna punish you. Maybe wow, I went too far. That, yeah, yeah. You're going to hell. <laughs> and, then, and, it, and in hell, it's 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 three eleven, twenty four hours a oh day. Oh my god! Oh my god! Suck it. 
you could, you had your chance. God gave you a chance. And what do you do? You write a different version of Led Zeppelin and change it. Idiots. Pathetic. You're just thinking about your penis all the time. Ooh, what can I dip it in? It's, no. Music. The music. You don't care. You don't have the passion. You don't have the la passion. Ooh. <laughs> this podcast is sponsored by HelloFresh. Hey, everybody. Do you like cooking? Because I don't. I really don't like it at all. And like I live in a house. It's got a lot of rooms. I've got a lot of animals. I don't have anybody to cook for me. And I really don't like it. But I just did it the other day. And you got to get a chopping board. And at first I was like, man, a chopping board? Like, I'm basically cooking right now. But between you and me, it's not really cooking. Because they give you like the right amount of vegetables and the right amount of meat. I chopped the onion, like the spring onion things. And I, I could tell from watching cooking videos. I did not do it the way they do it. No way. But then I put it in the bowl. And then I put in the sauces. And I stirred it all around. And I was like, dude, I'm basically a chef. Because this was an insanely good salad. And they deliver to your door and it comes in this box. And it's got like the ice pack things in there. So like the meat's fresh and the vegetables are fresh. Like if you got the meat frozen, you got to thaw that out. You put it in water. I just learned this the other day. You got to wait a little bit. So time that out. And then you can cook that. And then you chop with the chopping board. You chop the veggies. And you put it all in. Bob's your uncle. You're a chef again. Lies. Everyone's a liar. It's not that hard. Go to hellofresh.com slash ellisfree and use the code ellisfree for a free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at hellofresh.com slash ellisfree with code ellisfree. Okay. Well, here's kids. the other thing with, with radio as well is that radio is only going to service and play the songs that the major labels bring into them. That's what I said. Corporate. Yeah, I know. So I'm breaking it down. Let's do it. And <laughs> Let's break it down, Megan. Yeah. Let's break down corporate and how full of baloney they are. Yeah. Maybe they're di dipping their dicks in baloney. You know, Wouldn't wrapping it, me. wrapping it, you know. And they're paying for yeah. it because they're all hideous <laughs> and their wieners are gross. Hey. So, you know, back because, you know, back in the day, it was, you know, there were DJs that would, you know, come in fresh from getting an import from Japan, yeah. you know, and throwing the clash on or what, whoever it was. Mm. And they were, they were actually just putting passionate on music. Passionate. I was and like, they could Megan, play Megan, whatever they wanted. Megan, that was a real, real long time ago. Yeah, I know. I know. That That's like song. not really my, oh. my, our lifetime. No, it was not. <laughs> Move right. to yeah. India and do I mean, acid was, with somebody for a long period of was, time. Yeah. Like the Beatles did. Yeah. I guess since probably early nineties. Is There's one. a great book. I mean, I don't want to get sidetracked. Yeah. There's a terrific book called Hitmen about the way that literally the mafia got involved with yeah. getting music on the radio. Oh, I knew that. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And I mean, you hear about back in the day how, you know, different artists, uh, you know, their managers were selling or were paying off the, the DJs to yeah. play the songs or right. times, you know. Sure, the the so one dumb. example that I think they started the book, everybody should read the book Hitmen. It's just so interesting that it starts with is uh, Pink Floyd came to town touring the wall and they're like, the labels were like, Pink Floyd doesn't even really care about being on the radio. They're like, they've got four sold out nights at the Coliseum. Some rock station in LA, I don't know which one, has to play them. All the kids are so mm -hmm. obsessed with spinning. They have to, and, and whatever that station was, I don't know what it was, they were just like, nope, we don't need to play them. And then finally, after like three days, Pink Floyd was like, aren't we famous? Why have I not heard us on the radio yet? And the label cracked and they called the independent promoters whose job it was to go from the labels to the radio and go, okay, how much money? And uh -huh. like 45 minutes later, Pink Floyd was playing on, I don't know, maybe in K rock. Maybe it wasn't. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. The payola thing was very real. For, yeah. You know. Well, and I saw when we were at, at Sirius XM, I, I only knew so many of the music programmers, but among them, there was a sincere interest in, reinventing radio and not they they had all been in fm and they saw the short the shortfalls of uh, shortcomings of fm but then when it came down to it it's like i want to play this really crazy awesome thing but people want the chipotle of music yeah mm. and slowly and slowly but surely chipotle. it became more and more like fm radio because the, the reason why fm radio was like that in the first place is because the lowest common denominator likes Come on. <laughs> That's what they want. What do they like again? 
Come on. Yeah, you got to spread your wings, basic. <laughs> yeah, I love doing what I do because I just get to talk to people on, you know, and it's it's fun and like the interviews and going out to the concerts, you know, but it's funny to me that people think that I'm some people still think that I'm selecting the music that I'm playing that day. And I'm like, I promise you, I'm not playing three doors down kryptonite. When I was a again. DJ, everybody knew that I wasn't selecting it. Yeah. Because I was trash. You were very it open. Before I, yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. I love you for that. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. I don't know how I <laughs> shout out to Wilp and Davis for not firing me. <clears throat> there were times where I was trashing a band and he would come up to the glass of the door and look through the glass at me with a face of frustration and depression. Yeah. And I just smiled at him and was like, this is the worst band I've ever heard. <laughs> and he was like, use my space to see photos of them so you don't talk about how bad their music is. And I was like, this guy looks like the biggest douche I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Who wears shoes like that? Who has, yeah. But was, you know, if you think about it, even trashing, a, I think trashing a band is going to sell it more yep. than, than not. Or just not talking about it at all. If you're trying to sell a band, people are more likely to be like, nah, I'm going to, yeah. you know. But if you trash a band, then people are going to go find out for themselves and they might like it. You know, right. it's it, like even with us talking about Drake, he still got brought up in the conversation. Right. You're you know welcome, I mean? Drake. Yeah, Drake. Yeah. So it's, you know, I think uh, honestly, if more if we had more of an ability to actually be honest and tell the truth and be able to freely just talk about things, not only would ratings go up, that's why people love you is because you're giving them your truth. And I'm sure there were sometimes probably rarely bands that you were actually like, I've like this i'm sorry that i like this and you know <laughs> unbelievable i know it's unreal I can't take you anywhere. it's unreal you really yeah. can't yeah. but were there bands that you that you actually did like that you would tell people oh i actually like yes this? yeah see and then they really knew yeah i don't know wasn't many but yep yeah yeah everlast i liked him oh nice yeah, yeah so that worked out that's about it that's it just yeah. everlast uh i didn't hate avenge sevenfold at the start yeah, I liked Avenged too. Yeah, that was nice to them. I think that's about it, though. <laughs> Who was I nice? To? Well, Metallica, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, but they were, they were like, we don't. They were like Pink Floyd. They were like, we care if you say you didn't like need us your or help. You don't. Yeah. Oh, so of the newer bands. Yeah. I'm sure there's a couple, but, uh, you know, uh, I, Slipknot was still new-ish. Yeah, I've always mm-hmm. liked Corey Taylor. Mm-hmm. I've always said that he was one of the better vocalists that I've heard of, oh, yeah. of new people back then, obviously it's not that new now, but yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like I, like if you were musically gifted, I would give you credit for that. You mm-hmm. know, like whether I like the song or not, I would be like, I don't really like this song, but yeah. I'm not going to deny. I remember saying a few nice things about insane clown posse. Cause you know, they're terrible, but I, I was like, they got their own thing and and all these fans go and they all celebrate and and they got a community and 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 they made millions of dollars i ain't gonna hate on that yeah you know like i don't get it but if you make a scene for a bunch of people to feel at home you know and i feel like misfit wise because it seemed like a group of misfits and i feel like my show at the time was you know when i would do alice mania it was a group of misfits there's still people today that all hang out with each other and they're all friends with each other. Some are boning each other <laughs> thanks to the show, you know? Yeah. So like whether you like the show or not, my only thing was if you misunderstood it, you know? Cause I think some people would say, you know, misogynistic, blah, blah, blah. He talks about this. He talks about that. And I'm like, yeah, you, you might've been right, but my heart was in the right place. You know, like I, when I had those fight events, I didn't want anybody to get hurt. You know, like I wasn't like, punch you know try to hurt somebody like if they're small then you did now's your chance to knock them out like i was always about you know f- facing somebody that you were scared to face and 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 testing yourself and win or lose staying in the staying in the game like you know stay up take those shots until we call the fight and you want like to me you won like it wasn't about winning the fight beating somebody up it was about taking shots rocky balboa style taking shots and keep going you know and then afterwards when you go to the after party or whatever you can look at yourself in the mirror and go you know i i I, i'm not a quitter you know that those that's why i think later on when i started doing stuff at skankfest it kind of 
it got past that where it was just like, let's start hurting people again. So I'm not really that attached to it. But I remember there were several times at Alice Mania where I was very proud to be a part of it because I, I saw people fight that would never fight and it changed them. Mm -hmm. Win or lose. When they lost, sometimes, you know, people cried because they wanted to win so bad. And I was like, you, 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 you kicked ass. You know what I mean? Like you... You tried so hard to win and you took so many shots and I saw it on your face that you had no quit in you at all. And that's what you need to take away from it. Not a fake belt. You know what I mean? Like they're like 50 bucks. You can get them made. They're not, it doesn't mean anything, but I get, you know what I mean? We get caught up in like, I want to win. I want to be the champion, but it's not about winning. Like the older I get, it's not about winning. It's about being in it, you know, and not quitting. If you lose, it's even better, you know, because when you win, it's easy to win. You know, when you win, it's all glorious and everyone gives you a pat on the back and it's like, you won. And I get it. That's cool. But to lose and to not quit when you lose and then to walk around with that, there's more in you for that. You know, there's, it's, it's a harder thing to do. And usually when it's harder, it's a better payoff in the end. That's what I think anyway, even though I never lost. <laughs> that's not true i lost <laughs> well we definitely <laughs> learn the most during times of failure yeah like when i sure. fought shane cowan i knew i was gonna lose i remember looking in the mirror in the dressing room before i went out and i was like usually i look in the mirror before a fight and i'm like you can do this jason you know like you've got what it takes you put in the work you're gonna do this but for the first time ever i looked in the mirror i was like you're gonna get knocked out in front of all these people <laughs> are you ready for that? You know, like, are you ready for that, that hit? And I was like, I'm part of me was like, no, I'm scared. You know, I don't want to go out there. And I was like, you're going out there and you're going to do it. And it's entertainment and people are going to laugh. You know, they're going to be like, Whoa, he got smashed. You know, but he, but he stood up to a 300 pound that may have been doing some steroids whatever a giant man who's known for like being the hardest puncher in the ufc you're gonna take a shot from this guy and you're just like radio skateboard dude like that takes a lot you know and i remember i'm like i'm going out there and i'm gonna do it psychotic it's psychotic because i remember looking at myself and my i could hear my other voice going don't go clearly don't go out there and i'm like i'm going don't and i was like oh, well too bad we're going <laughs> And it was a, you know, man, and I lost it. I got a concussion and I don't really know what was happening. And when I tried to thank the crowd afterwards, I remember somebody saying, give me the microphone. I was like, I'm not making any sense, am I? No, give me the microphone. And, but oh in the end, there was one time I was at the gym, like maybe a year later. And there was this kickboxer guy who's real good. And I was hitting pads with my friend Eddie. And he comes in, he goes, dude. Saw that YouTube video, you fighting Shane Carwin. I was like, yeah. It's like, dude, I'll give you a lot of respect for that, man. And that, like, nobody knew that guy. No, well, I knew that guy was a real fighter, but it meant so much to me because mm -hmm. he was a real fighter. And he was like, dude, you've got it, you know? Yeah. Like, you're prepared to to go to war, mm -hmm. which which I take, I carry for the rest of my life. Like, if, if stuff pops off, I'm like, maybe I'm not the best, but I'm not. I'm not backing down. Like I'm the wrong one. And it feels good to know that, you know, because I feel like even when you lose, cause that's the other thing when you get hit and you go, Oh my God, I'm losing. It's terrifying. But if you get hit and you're like, I've been here before it, there's so much less emotion involved and it's no, it's so much less traumatizing. Like I feel like being beat up and thinking you're going to die. It's, tra it's traumatic. Well, yeah. But if you get hit and you're like, Pfft whatever you know it's like less take because i feel like i'm i'm scared of, of traumatic circumstances because i've been in so many but if i can be in one where i got a little grin on the inside from it so i'm like i've been here man like i'll wake up you know that's not that's bad advice but <laughs> it does help makes life less stressful you know when things do get rocky there's like a little bit of confidence in there. I was like, it's real bad right now, but you'll be all right. And I feel like I wouldn't have that if I hadn't tested myself so hard. Yeah. So it kind of works. I think it, it kind of sucks that 
we look at everything as you know good or bad, win or fail. But I it's do that. I mean, how how else are we really supposed to figure things out or learn or grow or get better? You know, right. and it, it's just like I think the the people who are most successful are the ones that are the most willing to constantly fail. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that on TikTok several times. Oh, yeah. I yeah. don't have TikTok. I don't know. You don't? No. I was going to say you must, but you don't need to. No. But I learn stuff on there because I don't really read. So every now and then I see stuff on TikTok where I go, nah, uh And then I ask like <laughs> an educated man. TikTok's mate, like, all Tully. like, uh-huh. <laughs> and then I ask Tully to, to, like, the, the, the BS factor. I'm like, hey, man, did you know? And he's like, did no. And I'm like, oh, okay. But sometimes I go, hey, man, did you know? And then we Google it. And I knew. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. Yeah. I would say See? like 60% of the time, <laughs> TikTok ain't lying. <sighs> so there you go. So there you go. I'm trying to think of one that I knew. Like, okay, <laughs> butterflies taste with their feet. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Well, there, now you okay. do. Okay. All right. It's freaking adorable, right? It is That adorable. one blows my mind. <laughs> it just stayed in there forever. Oh, and did you know that a turtle pees and poos out of the same hole his penis comes out of? Wow. Right? There's a lot of action going on. I'm just saying, it's a beautiful <laughs> world out there. A lot of crazy stuff is happening that you didn't know about. And it's good to know. I think TikTok is I didn't is learn that from TikTok. Great, you know, like for for people that like if you're you know, I'm really into cooking and you find like your little niche on there. I just get so bored being on like watching those videos over and I get bored Instagram videos. I just I'm really over the entire Social my Instagram media. has changed dramatically yeah. because of my choice to what I mean the sobriety thing and yeah. the uh, inspiration and spiritual awake awareness. I get so many quotes now. It's just mainly quotes. Like I, I, I less people getting way less people getting punched in the head. I really have <laughs> have steered myself away from fighting. I just feel like do the puff up thing is just. It's a cancer on our society. Just like, well, if you're not a man, you're not a... I'm like, dude, you know, you're not... Like, if you keep puffing up, you, the world passes you by. You know, the world is so beautiful. And if you're just like puffing up, trying to intimidate people all the time, you're just going to miss it. Yeah. And I feel like well, I've, a, I've done that for such a long time that it's just so overrated now. When I And, and the UFC is just full of them. It's never been more full of like, burr, burr, everyone's pussy compared to me. I'm like, did you cry? You're more terrified than everybody. That's why you're so puffed up. Because you can't share your real thoughts and your emotions. Because if you do, your dad raised you to, like, if you if you cry, you're a And it's just like, you know, when you're a baby, you cry, you know? It's like, you're letting it out. You know, if you keep it in, you're just a, you're just a, you're just a ready to pop all the time because you don't you've never really thought about who you are it's just like oh i feel something uncomfortable well i'm not a it's like we are all we all love people you all came from your mama and you mm. cried when you came out of the box shut up you know like love people i just want a bone no you don't you want a hug <laughs> you totally want a hug feels good to hug don't be so you want to be the small spoon yeah I, I don't know if I yeah I do want to be the small spoon I wasn't sure if I wanted to admit that see I still want to puff up no, oh I'm big spoon but yeah I like I would like I would like to go out with a giant lady and be a, a small spoon I would one of those blue chicks I would totally let her spoon me and I bet you I would sleep like a you, baby yeah yeah a good catch yeah good that's, yeah, see, that's yeah, a professional yeah, that's a professional two <laughs> He's looking to fork. <laughs> He's, oh, he is. Oh, oh yeah, see that? Oh. I got that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I noticed Brianna has been pursuing her passion for uh, sexy 90 rock frontmen. Oh, yeah. She's been perusing photos. I thought, Oh yeah. in what time remains to us here, we might run through some of the biggest names in 90s rock and roll. Ooh. I don't know if you uh, were immature enough in your youth to play uh, Bang, Mary, Kill. Oh boy! Uh, yeah, <laughs> man, yeah. we are on okay. fire right okay. now, dude. YouTube, no, I will not marry you, but I get it. <laughs> we are right. attractive. So okay. I thought, why don't we take a look back 
Okay. Some of the biggest names okay. in nineties rock. All right, let's do it. I love it. We can this. play Fornicate, Mary, Kill. Okay. okay. Even better. Fornicate to me, Fornicate sounds disgusting. Yeah, it's I know, worse. right? Yeah. It's like now it feels of, like we're. Like, yeah. Oh, just God. Liquor, you know? oh, Jason. You're that's what it is. That's a, that's a sign. No, you don't have to say cut, it. Of, did I just get a, did oh. I get a flag for that? There's or certain words that I no. don't. Oh, yeah. There's just ah, like, come on, fornicate. man. That's what doctors say. Fornicate sounds like we're sleeping with Joel Osteen. <laughs> yes, which would be terrible. I'm scared of that. Oh, I'm real. I'd rather fight Shane Cowan again than fornicate with Joel Osteen. Straight up. No, I feel like that it, is terrifying. Foreplay with him would be like getting probed by an alien. Oh, It'd wow. just be this finger. Oh. Yeah, he's goof. He's goofy ass face. Yeah. <laughs> He'd probably cry when he's fingering you. Oh so sad. God. He probably prays first. <sighs> yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh. Totally's right. Not horny at all. <laughs> all right. So let's bring it. up. Okay. We'll bring up three singers from 90s rock, and you tell us how you would rank them. Um, Sex, marry, kill. Oh, Whoa. I love Anthony Kiedis. I can't even lie to you. I don't care how many times I've heard Red Hot Chili Peppers. I love them and his book scar tissue had a big effect on me realizing i was a an alcoholic and an addict mm -hmm. yeah so okay i know you, you want your answer um wait wait well we need we need three yeah 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 okay all right yeah 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 right. you'd all marry right. him all right well maybe would you marry maybe? could you like if if he'd he'd, he came by he'd marry you the if you were 16 and i know <laughs> Well, I am in a happy, committed, okay, yeah, yeah, wonderful okay. relationship. Oh, I know. Okay. Of course. But, yeah, yeah, but I, we're taking but, that out. We're but, taking yeah. that out. None okay, of us are married. Out. Got Damn it, it Megan. None of, okay, got it. I love my wife okay. too, and I'm literally never attracted <laughs> to other women at all. Because that's the way that works. <laughs> Grow up. All right. Well, wait. So I need three options first. No, but just tell me. Oh. If Anthony Kiedis wanted yeah. to marry you, like if he's just like, listen, I just I really feel like we've really got something special here, and I just. I know I only met you. I, I want to know all three. I know options I only just first. met you doing station liners for K Rock, but I just really feel like it's just like the universe is like telling me. Would you like? It's now or never, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually not a bad impersonation. Yeah. You guys have the same. And you like it. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. What, would I marry him? Is that what you're asking? If not he's yet. just like out of nowhere, like you just got, you guys just had like a really great probably two, two minute probably. conversation. And, and plus, like, then I could hang out with Flea, and I love Flea, so yes. Cool. Oh, Flea's going to be in the closet watching. I guarantee you that. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> He's in the sock drawer. Okay, keep going. Next. <laughs> Gavin Rossdale of Bush. Yeah, that's bang. So far, I'm killing everybody. Oh, or, God. And kill. Fred Durst. Kill. And kill Fred. Yeah. How would you kill Fred Durst? How would I do Slowly. It? <laughs> <laughs> well, here, here's the thing I'll say about Fred Durst, though, is he's been trolling us. For a very long time, or Come he on. or he wasn't trolling us. What do you mean? That's just Fred. That's just Fred being Fred. <laughs> Limp Biscuit just trolled the music world. Right. right. So that's just like, to me, that's genius. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I feel, but there's no way I could bang or marry him. Yeah. So the the last option is kill him. I think it would be fun. Woo! Hypothetically, if he was locked in a room and is like he probably has a really nice house and like all the doors and windows were locked and you were just blaring Nookie while you chase him around with oh. a knife, that'd be a fun way to kill Fred. Yeah. Would, yeah, that's wow. pretty good. That's pretty nice. I almost want to marry him before I do that. <laughs> 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 all right, so you're marrying Kitas, banging. Do you want to bang Gavin Rossdale? Did you ever want to bang Gavin Rossdale? I interviewed him maybe like over 10 years ago now mm -hmm. and that's when he's in his prime yeah he was in he was in his prime he was recently divorced from gwen and oh. and he's a flirty man tell you that much very I, flirty man yeah that's why he's yeah. get so recently that, divorcing that gwen time, Stefani. Sure, i've heard that you know? from all sorts of people yeah he's, flirty. he's yeah yeah he's very flirty he's guy. a horn dog yeah he's a horn dog it's a curse mm -hmm. yeah yeah you know? he was lovely though you just he can't really turn nice. it off it's like yeah. satan just came down and well, said you just are too good a looking. walking penis he's, he was too looking of a guy my kids know? played with that nanny who oh. was in the center of the love triangle uh -huh. in a, it, with with him and gwen's kids in a, oh. in a playground oh wow mm. yeah, yeah. And that was as that was can you imagine it's Gw this is gwen stefani she's a, one of the hottest women Meh. gwen stefani doesn't love herself off. and that's why she can't find love <gasps> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
She doesn't value herself. What Boom. are you talking about? Boom! Look at her face. What did she need to do to her face? That, yeah, she hates has, herself. She took her has, face off and put another face on. That has nothing to do with whether... You are not no, looking it into it. No, not. What are you guys talking about? She doesn't realize that what she's worth, and that's why she yep. was in Preach, a, Michael. a bad relationship with a one-hit wonder who yep. was an English knockoff of our music, and then she left him and started dating a cheeseburger. Boom! Real facts right here. This know. is painful, I, but so I is disagree. the truth. I don't think there's anything wrong with people doing like any kind of plastic surgery. Yeah, not inherently. If I had money, no. I would do it. But I hate like, myself. Are, you know what I mean? Like what? Like, Boom! I just Honestly, fact myself. I, I really, I, I really disagree. I really disagree. I think she's so. What she's, is glycerine? She's she, exactly. Yeah. Who the hell knows? Who the hell knows? I thought he was saying listerine. <laughs> I was like, I get that. You know what I mean? You want to have fresh breath when you're making out with everybody. But glycerin, I don't get it. I don't think anybody did. It was the 90s. Yeah. He seemed yeah. to. Like he if was I'm covered in honest, Vaseline. Not a, not a big bush man right here. Yeah. Like, I don't. I don't. Really I respect get it. that. Yeah. I don't really get it. Yeah. Nobody, what is it? Yeah. No. He was a handsome guy who wrote. That's what it was. Who wrote yeah. Nirvana knockoffs. Breathe it's pretty in, simple. Breathe out. Yeah. yeah. And he was at that taping of Smells Like Teen Spirit, the video. Like he was up in Seattle during that time. Yeah. Like he went, you know. He was so modeling, he, right? He was what? He, Pro he some, oh, I'm sure he was. He did model, yeah. Yeah, and then he was up there and he saw them and he's like, oh, let me take this and go down to LA and write Interesting. some songs that sound like this. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's uh, do three more. Okay. Wait, who was that? Who are you marrying? Marrying Kiedis. Kiedis. Yeah. Banging wow. Rossdale right. yeah. and a, killing Fred Durst. I have a bush fact. Okay. Okay. Glycerine is a chemical used in perfumes and medicines and also to preserve food. The title comes from an explosive applications of glycerine to stabilize nitro. Rossdale said the song was about how love was like a bomb. Oh, wow. Yeah, right. He was <laughs> talking about cheese and how to make it last longer. <laughs> He wrote Glycerine. a song called Listerine, and he needed to find a cooler word. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Thank you, Michael. Like that that. You know so much, Michael. Uh, Kid Rock. Oh God. Dead. <sighs> this is we're talking. By the way, oh I wanna, God. I want to be clear. We're talking about them Help. in their in their nineties form. Yeah. Okay. It's only fair. Okay. Yeah. So you can't, we, nobody wants to bang Manson now. Yeah. So we didn't know what Kid Rock. We didn't know one day he was going to be shooting barbecue. <laughs> grills yeah he got real angry about right. that bud life okay. thing, huh? exactly so ba would a ba kid rock <laughs> you said ba would a ba that's what you did in a song oh god ba would a i actually just posted on my instagram about marilyn manson yeah and how you know the greatest thing as millennials that we ever did was through every elementary school throughout the u.s spread the rumor that Marilyn Manson had a rib removed so he could suck his own dick. Cher was first, right? See, I heard that Sting was first. Was the first. Because of his tantric skills. He was like, <laughs> nobody can last long enough, so I'm going to suck myself. No, but it's not true, is it? No. Oh, yeah. think, is it? Then why did you say Cher was first? Because Cher's the oldest. I don't think Cher needed to Was there a, a rumor about Cher? Dick. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So it started with Cher. She was the first plastic Sting? surgery Wait, person what are you too. Talking? So what? So she could go down on herself? Yeah. No. Right? No. So that she looked more slender. Uh, oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, she okay. doesn't have a penis, you <laughs> idiots. <laughs> I preferred the rumor in the pre-internet <laughs> era when you're like, I'm pretty sure that's not true, but yeah. I can't prove it. Right. That Marilyn Manson was the friend Paul from the Wonder yeah, Years. Yeah. 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 People yes. started posting all of these like old. I would marry Cher. Rumors. Sure. Cher's a legend. I want to live in her house. Yeah, well. I bet she has a really did, good bath. Did she sell that? Did we talk about that? Yeah, but right. she could get it back. I'm sure she could, yeah. If I married her. <laughs> I'd be like, get that house back and then leave me alone. <laughs> oh, uh, and Trent Reznor. I get yeah. so many bath bombs. Mm -hmm. You're marrying Reznor. Reznor's the keeper here. Yes, out of all. Reznor that's, is that's easy. clearly the keeper. It's just Even like, who 90s. do you kill out of Kid Rock and, and, and Marilyn Manson? Because they yeah. both deserve to die. You're going to have to sleep with one of them. Right. Oh, I guess Manson... I would, I would sleep with Kid Rock. I'm not going to lie to you. What? Let's yeah. get rocked. Yeah. yeah. Let's get rocked. Because mm -hmm. to me, when, even when I was younger, I was like, this Marilyn Manson guy is a freak. I, I would... What were you basing oh, that on? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you can cut that out. <laughs> but I mean, God. This, in just, in retrospect, there were a couple of words. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, any, I'm sorry, but I just was, I just always thought this guy, something ain't right over yeah. here. Something ain't right. This guy who did You're the pretty album, quick. Who did the album Smells Like Children. <laughs> Seems a little off about him. Wait, he did? Yeah. Smells Like Children? Yeah, it's like a Hansel and Gretel reference. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I mean, he made some, some great songs, but. Cake and Sodomy. You know? That's pretty cool. That's my favorite Manson song. That's pretty cool. All right, let's do three more. Okay. Moby. <laughs> okay. Courtney Love. We're throwing a woman in there? Why not? Okay. Perry Aww, Farrell. Oh, Perry. You want to marry Perry Farrell? No, you don't. Uh, let's see here. Oh, can you imagine having sex with Moby, though, you guys? A lot of people could. A lot of Re people have. He used to kill. Really? Yes, yes. I remember being jealous of him. Really? Yeah, I went to a restaurant with Benji Madden, and he was there with like three girls by himself. And I was like, really? Because yeah. I never got it. Yeah. And I thought he looked like a molted penis. And I was like, really? Hot ladies? And wow. I remember it was like a thing because it was like Benji Madden was there, and, and all the ladies want to sleep with him. And the ladies got very confused. Because they were like, I'm with Moby, but that's Benji Madden. And then I saw Moby look at Benji, and they were both like, "Where? I mean, everybody wants a bonus." Oh and I was just standing there going, "Wow, this is a super." Hot, you mean like, who? I nobody wants to bone me, but this who? This is like a this is like the the head of who wants to be boned the most. Wow. And I saw the ladies all acting like they weren't perplexed, but they were freaking out. They were like, "Oh, oh, oh!" God. Yeah. I had a, but here's the thing. It to me. I just feel like people, all people care about is the fame factor because to me, both of those options are, an, are really a Wait, no Benji go. Benji Madden's hot as hell. No, he's not. Yes, he is. No, he's not. I would marry Benji Madden. No. He's I don't people. get the appeal of either of those He guys. is such a sweetheart. No. I'm sure he's, he's probably a sweet. One of the he seems really cool and really sweet. And he's and genuine. Lovely. He's not a cheater. He's like a really good guy. Yeah, well, if you want to get, get into a relationship with someone, sure. But we're talking about marry, boning like, someone. We're talking about boning someone, right? Yeah, I don't know about that. So, all right. Well, then, based on all this information, mm -hmm. I would have to marry, oh, I got, I, marry Moby. Wait, I got okay. a, wait, yeah. I got a what? Moby. I got a Moby story that might okay. change your mind. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay, go ahead. Yeah. I think at this point I can just say the name. Okay. Uh, Gibby Haynes. Okay. From Butthole Surfers uh -huh. told me that back in the crazy days of mashups, what if this band did a song with that song? And with that band, he was supposed to do a song for a soundtrack, and Moby came to his house, and then Moby was like, excuse me for a second, like go to the bathroom, and then Moby didn't come back for a while. And then he's like, where's Moby? And he went looking for him, and he found Moby going through his wife's underwear drawer. Oh, okay. All right, that's good information. Even better information. Gibby Haynes tells okay. a lot of stories, so maybe All right, that's then not here, true. I've Gibby got Gibby Haynes it. also claimed that he touched his penis to President Jimmy Carter's daughter's luggage handle. Wow. Wow, I don't maybe know. Maybe it's not true. I don't know. Okay, then you know what we're going to do? Yeah. Here's what we're going <laughs> to do. Is that going to change things? You know what we're going to do is I'm going to bang Perry Farrell. I'm I, think that's go fair. I think that's fair. You're crazy, woman. Okay, no. I'm going to, I'm going to marry Perry Farrell. Yes. I'm going go. to I think you're all right, I'm going to bang Courtney Love. Sure. Right. And I Holla. am going to kill Moby. Yes. Yeah, we've turned it around. That is correct. We've turned it around. We've turned it around. <laughs> yeah. That is the correct answer. Perfect. That was good, right? The world yeah. is better if that happens. Yeah, I think that I needed to gather more because I'm like, I don't know anything really about Moby aside from that he's vegan and he got all these weird tattoos yeah. on him. I think, I think he's either always was or became sober. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it then I, like he, he had pool parties with like messy porn stars. Uh. Not, porn stars are cool, but messy ones, eh, you know? Yeah. You got a whole house of them every day. Eh, <laughs> you know, because it's like... Uh, it's vi positive and negative vibrations, bruh. Yeah. And that's negative vibration. That's low vibrational. Sorry. But it is. And then <laughs> yeah, there's high vibration people. And if you're surrounding yourself with low vibration, it's like, that's what you think you are. Did you hear that on TikTok? No. Oh! No. Sober friend told me that. Yeah, no, it's true, though. It's true. Sam Tripoli. Mm-hmm. He's a good guy. Sam, I love Sam. He's I really hopped up on Sam. vibrations. Yeah. Sometimes maybe a little too <laughs> many vibrations, but still, I get it. I get it. Yeah, he's, he's like he's when right. you, he's like yeah. when you get distracted and you keep tuning your guitar string, and it just goes like. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> <laughs> that was some serious music talk right there. Lane Staley, 
Ooh, oh, yeah. before Val- he died. Allison yeah. Chains, yeah. Right. Uh, you got to know. You got to check. Sammy Hagar. Oh God. Let's huh. not forget Van Halen. Still I'm... a going concern into the nineties. Ruined it. Pound cake, run around. Right now, <laughs> such 50, hits as fifty five can lick. And uh, the fire starter. Yeah, Keith Flint. Um, that song was pretty good. A uh, fire starter. Song. Yeah. Oh, the yep. fire starter. I like. Hey. I like smack my bitch up. I yeah. Like okay. One. I thought it was the yeah. same song. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, those are those are okay. great songs. Yes, they uh, yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. they suck. Look at but, him. Look at him. He doesn't yeah. like it. But they're good in he a weird. Like it's it. like it's like he's, that Lego song. He's looking at me like I thought you were. Anything else. Anything is awesome. Uh, That's what it's like to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go with. Tell is disgusting. I'm sorry, but I'm killing Sammy Hagar. Yes. Um, I'm, okay. I'm, correct. I'm, once again, how? This is a consequence for universe. Listen, I'm going to drive 55 into a wall. Listen, you're going to get away with it. Just how would there's, you? There's okay. Listen, Sammy I'm the Hager. kind of person that like if you're not attractive and I'm not f- messed up, you have to it, die. It, like you no, know, you don't have to die. <laughs> but I can't. Sl- I can't sleep with you. No, nah. uh-huh. I can't do it. Yeah, you're tough so, but fair. I finally agree to that. I'm sorry, I yeah. just can't. So you put a noose around him, you get a convertible, <laughs> you drive 55, and you watch his head go bop. Okay, and then I'm gonna go with. Uh, okay, wait, Keith. Who was my first option? Uh, Lane Staley of Allison. Oh, okay, Chains. okay. Uh, uh, I'm gonna marry Lane Staley because yeah. he's so you get talented. Him sober. Un- yeah. yeah, he's getting. You could have so- saved him. Yeah, I could have saved him. Yeah. Thank you. If not make sure you can change the I will. I mean, God. That- <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then I'm I'm killing. Fire I mean, starter. I'm banging Firestarter. Oh yes. yeah, yeah, because yeah, yes, yes. kind of fit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. I mean, I His think up, face, though, up close, over the top yeah, here. up close, yeah, yeah. Turn he, lights I'll off. I'll bang him, but I'm wearing a blindfold. Yeah, he's gonna bang you in time to the music. Okay, uh, okay. well, that's not that bad. Rhythm, that's great. Like he's gonna wait till the beat drops to come. <laughs> You're right. That's kind of cool. Right. You're right. <laughs> if he does that and he actually does it, I'm impressed because that's timing. His buddy might come by to do a, a to, to to do a verse. Oh okay, that, boy! That yeah. Oh it. wow. <laughs> He should die too then. Uh, do we have time to do all these? Okay. Axel Rose. In his prime. Yeah, sure. Not now. This is uh, no, yeah, this Petty. is this is this is usual illusion era. Not singing Santa. Tom Petty is in the uh, you don't know how it feels, last dance of Mary Jane era. Yeah. And uh, Art Alex however the hell I don't care how you say his name. I refuse to learn how to yeah. say the guy from Everclear's name. I love art. Um, you do? Well, just as a human being, he's wonderful. You met oh, him. God. I met him one time. I interviewed him once. So Lovely. there's Lovely. there's a documentary, a really great documentary about the uh, underground cartoonist R. Crumb, and it's like about him. And it's also about his brothers. He's like a weird dude that found a way to like make art out of his weirdness. His brothers are just were just weird, mm. and one of them got really into like asceticism and yoga. And what's asceticism? Like uh, the path to fulfillment is to like is like nothingness, like live on very little food and don't if you don't need anything. Get what you about like, pizza? He probably didn't eat pizza. <laughs> and one of the things that he one of the things that he would do, I forget the reason why, but he would have this really really long string and he would swallow part of the string and then like wait for it to go his body to digest it and it would come out the other end. You got to kill him. That's what, the what guy from art... Everclear seems like he would oh my do the string thing. <laughs> no. Oh. That's the vibe I, I thought you were saying And you did art, it. listen, art has been sober for a very long time as well. I know, which makes really the terrible good, music dude. that much less excusable. Oh my God. You have to say, bro. You know what, Tully, I'll buy you a new life. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, okay. Here's, yeah, you're not going to like this. Tully's not going to like this at all. Okay. Neither am I. Okay. So um, I'm going to bang, or no, hold on. I'm going to marry Tom Petty. Sure. I'm going to bang, Classic. I'm going to bang. Art Alex oh Hackett. my god! He's not gonna be and good. And I, it's fine. Who cares? Is he's he's. What do you mean he's, you don't care? He's got a nice enough. He's good, good His looking face enough. Is dumb. It's very punchable. Yeah, but Axl Rose, no way in hell. You don't think he would have been good when he was Ugh. fit? Ugh. Really? I hate, I hate Guns and Roses. I'm sorry. All right. Wow. Art's yeah. gonna have a lazy boner though. You know That's that. That's fine though. It's a one time deal. Is it, man? You know. Yeah. It's not. He's got it's like one of those like. What, what, I'm, marrying, what, what, I'm literally marrying Tom Petty. You could give him a blue chew. I mean, what do I care? Back. What are those flowers that are just like? Meh. <laughs> That's oh. what his boner's like. Oh I know, right? It's sad. His boner's just like. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Dun, dun. <laughs> I know. When he jizzes, it's like a duck crying. It's just like man. It's not fun at all. 
was so good. That's terrible. That was so good. Let's do uh, two more. Okay. We got Eddie Vedder. Aw, Eddie Vetti. A Pearl Jam. Kurt Cobain. And uh, the guy from Smash Mouth. <laughs> <laughs> this is like lined up. Mary Eddie Vedder. Bang. Kurt Cobain. Kills. Oh, he's dead already, though. R.I.P. They're all dead. Oh, yeah. They <laughs> Eddie, no, Eddie not, Vedder is, te- is technically dead. alive. Yeah, he, you, Eddie, you, you sure if you say so? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the the Smash Mouth guy is dead. He did yeah. die. Yeah. But you don't want to have sex with him if they're both. If they're Can all I alive. Can I tell you that oh, the Smash I Mouth guy? He's a nice guy. I don't. He was the worst guy. He would pick on me on Twitter all the time because he would listen to me on the radio up in San Francisco, and he would just talk. Tully all used to crap. attack him, and he would he would he would defend. freak out. He'd be like, actually, we sold this many yeah, albums. Yeah, I know. I'm like, what I kind know. of an insecure man? How- well, he, dude, he was a massive alcoholic. He died from alcoholism. Right. And, yeah. he, and he had mental issues. Yeah, I'm sure. To be, to be sure, yeah. They tend to come together, you know? It's like, yeah. and yeah. if you have enough alcohol, you're going to have some mental problems. And if yeah. you have enough mental problems and you you're living on alcohol. the road, you might get into yeah. alcohol mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're going to kill the smash mouth. Yep, double That's kill. Fair. I think we mm-hmm. can all agree on that. Double dead. You don't want to marry... Kurt Cobain? No. no but you could have saved him. Junkies I are stinky. It. I would have killed myself <laughs> if I was <laughs> If I was married to Hull, I would have killed myself. Well, I wasn't. I didn't marry her. She that must was, have that was another really... one. That was a one-time deal again. You I know? think having an argument And that was when I was drinking. When I had when I slept with Courtney Love, love that was oh, in my okay. drinking days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have been you know horny. What I'm saying? One time, sleep, one time. <laughs> it would have been. Yeah, it would have been. One time yeah. sleeping yeah. with her would be so rad. It right? would be so fun. Two times. Oh, just like one night hanging out. One time getting high with Courtney Love. The dream. Yeah. The dream. That would have been cool. Just do blow with her all night. It'd be a blast. And let's did I do blow with her. I think I did. Yeah. Yeah, but I left. Because okay. I didn't want to do blow, and it was like at a party where you got an individual straw. Somebody gave me like a, a straw, and then they were passing the plate around, and everybody at the table was real famous. Yeah, and it was like you're up, and I was like, oh, and I didn't. I got peer pressured, and then I did it, and I went over to my person that I was living with, and was like, I just did a bump. I gotta go. Because I didn't do bumps anymore. Yeah. And I was like, I feel real bad. I got to go. And then, yeah, I left. But I think you could say that you did bumps with the those people because they were there. But I did not enjoy myself at yeah. all. I it's, regretted it immediately. Yeah. In theory, <laughs> it's fun. But Yeah, it would have been different if it was just me and Hull and we were yeah. like going to bone. But it was just like, who is this? douche <laughs> and the person's party was like he's a he's cool he fights and he's got knives <laughs> he's got knives <laughs> i think that manson liked me because i had a lot of knives and he liked knives and i fought and i fought marilyn manson we're back to yeah. him oh god brian god freaking brian <sighs> all right you guys and finally okay finally last the one. 90s incarnation of johnny cash it's not that gay. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's yeah, it's you can't bone him. Today. Yeah, okay. yeah. Right. That's like boning mm-hmm. a chewed up piece of tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Corgan. Hell no. Of the yeah. Smashing Pumpkins yeah, and his Punchable Prime and Michael Stipe of REM. Oh, hell guys. no! I'm boning. I'm marrying boning Johnny Cash now. I didn't know that there was going to be that other um, man. Who do you kill out of those two <clears throat> douches? Billy is wonderful. Yeah, we love Billy. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna marry Johnny Cash. Yes. I mean, because he's gonna stay with you until you <laughs> die, and then he's gonna die right after because he loved you so much. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bang Billy Corgan. Oh. I am. He's gonna make those noises when he has yeah, sex. It's okay. It's oh. okay. I'm gonna come now. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna go for a run. Yeah. Oh God! <laughs> but then again, the other guy's gonna be the other REM guy's oh, gonna. God. He's got an even worse voice. Yeah, stand. I'm gonna come now. <laughs> like shut stand up. me in the corner. Oh, <laughs> oh! I'm gonna. Stand can I kill in myself in this? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Who do you? So who? Do you, who are you killing? Killing REM. Yeah, smart. Yeah. Man, yeah. I, that hurt to admit, but. 
Oh, God. Smart. Uh, yeah. Billy, Billy Corrigan. <laughs> just can't sleep with him. But. He was so... Bree and I had the best experience hanging out with him, though, backstage. Yes. Oh, he would be lovely. He, he would, would be. not be nice to you afterwards. I think that so. is a smoke show. Listen, he changed a lot as a, as, you know, as he as he grew older. But he, he would have a lot. So he just maybe then, maybe up. not so much. But now, yes. He was a jizz and walk for sure. <laughs> probably, probably, huh? Probably, yeah. I've you're heard, probably I've heard. right. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I've heard. All right, well, that we have fun. come to the end of the rainbow. Before we wrap up, do you what can you say about the nonprofit that you are launching, Megan? Okay. Well, it's going to be a ways down the line, but basically what it is is just it's called Life of the Party and we just want to try to get Narcan into the hands of as many uh, festival goers or event goers as is possible. So Narcan um, is the anti-opiate, right? Yeah. So if someone's overdosing from an opiate, uh, you can administer it in a, a nasal spray and uh, you can potentially save their life. So Should everybody just like keep some in their yes. car just in case yeah. they're the nearest person and nobody else has some? 1000%. Everyone should have it, you know, yeah. in, in your house, in your car. And I think ideally it'd be awesome for Anybody who's, you know, willing to carry some in their backpack or their purse at a festival, you know, because I've been there where I'm standing there and someone just drops down and yeah. I don't know what they're on. But the cool thing with Narcan is you can just administer it. You could give it to a pregnant woman. It would not harm them. Can you so, stab them in the chest with a needle? Because I've always wanted to do that to somebody. I mean, listen, you can, Jason, but, you know. Right. I don't even you care might. if it saves you. I just want to do it. Cause pe- <laughs> exactly. Because people don't even really know about it. My <laughs> wife. I forget. Maybe it was when my daughter was born. They gave her some sort of painkillers and they gave her Narcan. And, you know, you're just like going home from the doctor and take this and this piece of paper yeah. and that prescription. And you're just like, yeah, yeah, cool. And then she just threw it in the medicine. Cabinet. I found some in my house. Yeah. And I was like, you yeah. have Narcan. And she's like, what is that? And I'm like, it's in case you. Oh, she's like, why the hell do I have opiate? Yeah. I think o- we overdose got from- medicine. Yeah. I'm like, did somebody give you an opiate? Because yeah. I'm on the internet. I, I just like I'm exposed to stuff because of the nature of the work we do and the listeners that we interact with. Like I hear about stuff that's well outside of my usual life and frame of reference. Yeah. But most people get that stuff and they don't even know what they're. Oh, totally. Getting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's definitely like more and more people learning about it, and knowing what it is. Yeah. And I don't think many so- people know that such a thing even exists. Yeah, yeah. It, there needs, is- it just needs to be normalized. You yeah. know, just harm reduction in general should be more normalized. People should be t- like testing their drugs with test strips and stuff like that so i just want to get involved in the conversation there's tons of harm reduction Mm -hmm. you know places organizations already but let me ask you a dumb question about that you're saying testing drugs is that something that's available to the average yeah because like i'm we're getting to the point with my son is 12 Mm -hmm. where we're like i'd rather have the conversation too early than too late when he does a bump first test it yeah if you're around drugs and stuff (laughs) yeah well yeah yes absolutely there are the testing strips however they are not 100 percent accurate Uh so you know but still but it's still better than just going in blind you know I'm yeah. trying to think back in my bump day if someone was like, wait a minute, I'm going to test it. <laughs> I'm wondering if I'd be like, shut up. <laughs> or I'd be like, yeah, 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 test it. Well, but we didn't have anything na- like I know, fentanyl. Now, if I was doing bumps in this era, I think I'd be like, yeah, 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 test it. See, yeah. I don't even know if I would, to be honest with you. I know, right? I'm such a drug addict. So I would just give it to me and let me I know. smoke right. it as soon as possible. Even if it's got it in it, I'll be able to hack it. Yeah, okay. it's like well, 1,000%. I'm yeah. not trying to say that junkies deserve to die but junkies are in, engaging in lots and lots of risky stuff like at this point in time it's I'm more for, con- I'm more concerned I, about saving the high school or the college kid. Yeah. it's going to do it once or twice that's who and I'm concerned they should, about they should just be able to well. do it and put it behind them and yep. instead they die exactly. at a party that's my exact thing from yeah. some people that I've met who lost you know young um, you know children things like that and just all the stories I'm just like some kid you know try to Vicodin and it had fentanyl in it and he first time trying it and he and he dies and that's just that's not okay exactly you know? it's, so it's unfathomable as a parent yeah it is it is so just want to get involved in that conversation you guys I love you thanks for having me on again yeah seriously on. this was really fun thanks everybody for listening if you want to see more Jason Ellis show we got a Patreon where we do a lot of shows all week patreon.com slash Ellis mate <laughs> we're the best ever so recognize don't die. <laughs>